So you see, anterior clear drilling is required in two situations. One is for tumors, tumors which are maybe tuberculum salium meningiomas or most often tumors in this area which we call paraclinoid and going into the optic foramen. So lesions which are in this paraclinoid or paraclin area or tuberculum salium meningiomas or cavernous sinus meningiomas and going into the optic foramen, they will require drilling in this area. And for tumors, I always prefer to do extra dual drilling because of two reasons. One is it is safe and you can devascularize the tumor and many of the times this is associated with hyperastrosis. So for tumors, I prefer to do always extradural drilling to get rid of this hyperastrotic bone and to devascularize the tumor before it opens and get more space and de-roof the optic nerve. For aneurysms, I always do intradural drilling because I want to see the aneurysm before I drill it. It has happened once or twice that while doing extradural drilling, although it, it's not that common, sometimes aneurysm can rupture if you are not so careful. So for aneurysms, I would suggest you do under vision drilling intradurally and for tumors you do an extradural drilling and this is the basic principle I have followed. So when we have to do anterior clinoid drilling, the first step is of course a frontotemporal craniotomy or a tyrional craniotomy and taking off the sphenoid ridge. So once you have done a tyrional craniotomy, you take out the sphenoid, lesser wing of sphenoid. So this is lesser wing of sphenoid as you, all of you do and open up the superior orbital fissure. Once you have done that, then we start drilling the anterior clinoid. The basic step is you core out the bone till you get a thin shell and then you remove it either with a, with a dissector or with a needle holder. This is the basic concept. So it is very simple. Clinoid has two roots. One is towards the tuberculum celli area of the plenus and second is the optic strut. So you core it out and in tumors you have to decompress the optic nerve in the area because most often the tumors in this area, they, even if you see it or not, it is going into the optic foramen. So you have to decompress the optic nerve. So this is the clinoid process. This is the one which is going towards the planum and there is an optic strut here which is seen here. I will show you different ways. I mean this is the optic strut. Tip of the clinoid, the lesser wing coming here, superior orbital fissure. So lesser wing, this is also sometimes called one root of the clinoid process. So some people say it has three roots. One is the one which is towards the lesser wing of sphenoid. Other one is which is below this and middle to this is optic strut and the other root is like this. So when we are coming from this side, tyrional side, we are removing the bone, there is a vessel here, orbital vessel which you coagulate. Remove this bone here by a standard drill and then start drilling out the clinoid process here. From lesser wing of sphenoid, optic canal, anterior clinoid process, the optic strut. Sometimes you have a middle clinoid process here. Yeah, this is a middle clinoid process here. The lesser wing of sphenoid, optic canal, anterior clinoid process and sometimes you can have interclinoid bridges. I mean, just various diagrams showing the anterior clinoid process. Sometimes it is pneumatized. That makes your lobe a little easier and sometimes this can extend into the sphenoid sinus also. So you have to be careful sometimes when you are drilling, you can open the sphenoid sinus. No, it's nothing major but you have to know about it. Otherwise you can have a cesafranoria unless you really pack it. So you have to know that this can be pneumatized and this pneumatization can extend into the sphenoid sinus. It is showing the pneumatization. Huh? This is not a sinus, this is a tick lunar process which is pneumatized. So this is a standard diagram from the rotons. You can't get better diagrams than you get in a roton. So there is no use getting or replicating it, just take it from that book. So from the anterior clinoid process, when you talk about dural folds, there are two dural, upper dural ring and lower dural ring. Dura from the upper surface of the clinoid process leads to the upper dural ring and from the lower surface leads to the lower dural ring. And in between these two rings, so many names are given, the clinoidal segment of the carotid artery of the carotid cave. So this is an important information you should have. And when you are doing aneurysms, especially carotid of thermic aneurysms, you have to open the upper dural ring. So you follow this, normally there is a falciform ligament which extends from the anterior clinoid process to the optic nerve. So once you cut this thing, before you start drilling, you must always cut this falciform ligament. Because quite often when you are operating on a PECAM artery aneurysm and you see, you feel that you don't have a proximal control, you just cut this falciform ligament, you get a little bit mobility of the optic nerve and you can see the proximal neck of the aneurysm, especially in PECAM and, and sometimes keratoophthalmic also. So you need not drill that time. So before you start drilling anterior clinoid, you cut the falciform ligament, try to mobilize the optic nerve and see whether you can get to the proximal part of the aneurysm. You get my point? So then if even after that you see that it's, no, it's not okay, then you can start drilling. So for aneurysms, that's why that's another reason for doing intradural drilling for aneurysms. So because you have to mobilize the optic nerve and then start drilling if required. So just going through the upper ring from the upper surface of the clinoid, lower ring from the lower surface of the clinoid. And in between this is the segment that is that clinoidal segment. This is the lateral view. Optic nerve, carotid artery, clinoid process, dura from the upper side forming the upper ring, from the lower surface forming the lower ring. This is the cavernous carotid artery forming a loop here. 
and there is a clinoid segment dura. So, you have to cut this ring to get to the endosome proximal neck. This is an important step and this is easy. It may look sound that is something difficult, but it is very easy. I mean, this is a tough dura. You cut with the sharp scissors and it is some only if you cut only 1 or 2 millimeters, you remarkable the amount of space you get to proximal to the endosome. So, just the same thing. So, this is I mean, I am just giving you again and again the same so that you have a visual impression of what you are doing. It may sound repetition, but that is all. Same thing. The carotid artery, once you see the optic nerve, you see you normally when you are doing for a cranial cryotomy, the carotid artery you see lateral to the optic nerve. But you must realize below the optic nerve, it is just below and coming from medial side. So, it is not always lateral because it is coming from the cavernous segment the, of the cavernous carotid and when it is taking a loop, it is below the optic nerve and then coming lateral. So, this must be clean in your mind. So, this is the first step is tyrannoid cryotomy, second step is taking out the lesser wing of sphenoid and third step is anti clinoid process taking out. Ultimately, when you have practiced all the approaches, so you come down to only three things uh, as far as I am concerned. One is you must know how to do anti clinoid drilling. Second thing, you must know how to do a good retro sigmoid exposure and third thing, you must know how to do a frontal orbital diagrammatic. Other than this, practically you do not need to know any other skull based approach. This trans petrosal approach is anterior petrosectomy still has a role, but posterior petrosectomy, complete petrosectomy, extreme trans condylar, they are all overrated and not really required in more than 95 percent of cases. So, basic frontal orbital diagrammatic or a standard renal cranotomy, anterior cranoid drilling and a good retro sigmoid approach is one which will take through all the clinical situations you will see in your life in 99 percent of cases. Take it from me because I have done all this, I mean I may be wrong, but this is what I feel like. I have done all those approaches that come down to these only. I am not doing any other approach now. This uh, I do not have a CT of the patient which I am doing this. This patient had a planum uh, tuberculum cell meningioma extending into the orbit in the optic canal. So, I thought that we have to drill the clinoid and de-roof the optic nerve also. So, we have taken out the lesser wing of sphenoid and this, this bone was hyperostrotic. We will keep on coring it, just core it, core it, make it thin and then remove the shell. So, this is taking longer because this is a hyperostrotic bone. There was a meningioma, it was a hyperostrotic. Extra dual drilling advantages you can use retractors and be safe and do not keep any cottonite or soft or anything, keep the clean area free, just keep on doing it and keep on having a look in between whether this is becoming free or not. After some time, this will become a free and you can mobilize and just break it like this. This is the left side. So, you see this is becoming a, you are making a bigger hole. You have to core into the clinoid and make on increasing the hole from inside and try to in between this is the dura being reflected here and trying to see it is not still free. Uh, it is started to move a little bit, you see. So, this is important because you must know when you are coring. I do not want or you should not want you go across through and through and then see ok I have done. In between stop and see how much outside the bone is still remaining. Then you can keep on breaking it. In this patient, I had to de-roof the optic nerve also, so I had to remove the strut also. And this is a fine nibbler, sometimes a needle holder can act as a good nibbler. Now, this is the left side because the optic nerve will come somewhere here. So, th this is there is still a huge amount of this is there is a large hyperostosis. So, after still the scoring has to be done further. And when you are using a drill, always use the, do not do half hearted pressing over the just press it fully. When you have to take it out, stop it completely before you take it out. Do not start pushing the foot pedal till you are on to the area where you want to drill. And these may be small things, but I have made mistakes. You take the drill and then put the feather and while you are coming, you injure something on the way. So, first let the burr come into the view 
of your microscope and at the area where you want to drill before you start pressing over the foot pad and press it fully. Yeah, this side dura is quite free now. Yeah. yeah, now you see here probably we have gone through an area. Now this side will be the optic strut. You see here this, this dura has come here. This is probably overlying the optic nerve area. So this bone is the optic strut and this is the area of the, the other root which is going towards the plenum sinoidal. And in between sometimes you can use a 1 mm carisons also to remove the bone. So we have taken out one mm carison is a very good instrument, in uh, because sometimes uh, you get tired of doing that diamond drill, maybe taking too much of time. So this is a helpful instrument. Can you see this thing here? Probably once we remove this, this is the area where the optic nerve should be. This is the optic strut. This is the area where the optic nerve is getting deroofed there. There is still a bar of bone here. Once we remove this and then take it out. So Can you appreciate this optic nerve area here? This is extra dual optic nerve getting de-roofed. De I am using AM8. AM8. Uh, diamond drill takes too much of time. Mm -hmm. It's and interesting shape. Yeah. So, we have taken so I just showing you this thing so that you have to. This is an important step in these tumors. Even if you don't remove, not able to remove the tumor completely, you have to de-roof the optic nerve. That is the most important thing. That is what I am showing. This is the optic nerve now almost completely de-roofed except for this part now. So this is the optic strut area. This is towards the planar sinoidal area. This is the optic nerve and the, we have completely de-roofed it and removed the bone over it. So just spend some 10-15 minutes here. So this will be helpful because it will be de-roofing the optic nerve and it will be de-vascularizing the tumor. In this patient, when you open the dura, it was practically like a avascular tumor because we had removed the bone, we have coagulated the dura and, and practically for patient point of view, we had done the optic nerve decompression and then this tumor was a cavernous sinus meningioma. So I left part of the tumor, I did not enter into the cavernous sinus at all. Just removed the tumor which was outside and then gave a gamma knife. So I have become conservative with this. So I will just, so this is the optic nerve completely de-roofed and this is the last part of the clinoid process which we will be removing here. So this is, we are at the anterior edge of the thing now. So this is the last part of the clinoid process which is being removed and completely removed. I think we will stop here. Huh?